Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Things have continued to be quite mixed on the whole recently, but there have been some warm and sunny days to be found. I took this picture in Bath last week and it was a beautiful day. Now, how are things shaping up as we head through the next two weeks? Well, a lot of uncertainty in the details. One of the reasons is because for much of a period there's going to be very warm air sitting over continental Europe and on occasion it may be heading in our direction. Anyway, as usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 15th. And at the outset, there are some showers, mostly in the north, but one or two further south as well. Now, as I run this animation, the showers tend to become more scattered as high pressure influences things and temperatures will be rising. I'll look at those in a moment. But as we go through Friday, and into Saturday, some very heavy and thundery outbreaks of rain are shown to be moving northeastwards across all parts of the UK. A little bit of uncertainty still about the details of these and the timing of them. But the general theme seems to be quite well set now. Then showery conditions follow behind them, but maybe not too bad at all in southern and central regions with high pressure having a good deal of influence. The Showers along spells of rain then continue to affect the north, particularly the northwest, but high pressure for much of a period keeps things drier in the south. The jet stream and uh, air temperature profile associated with that computer model run, so air temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level. The UK is just here, and the yellow shading to begin with, so yellows, oranges, and reds indicate the very warm air, the greens and the blues up there, the much cooler air. As I run this, what we see is in the short term, there's some warm air being pulled up across the UK, but then it turns more unsettled. But for a time, if you notice there, some very warm air is pushing into the south and the southeast of England, just off the continent. But then it, by the end here, 00, zero GMT, Wednesday the 23rd, it's been shoved away once again. So a lot taking place. And as I say, the details about how this is going to develop are up for grabs. But let's take a look at some of the temperatures down at the ground level, if that computer model run is correct. Forecast maximums here, Wednesday the 16th, 24, 25 in southern and central areas, a few degrees lower as you head northwards. Then by Friday, as that warm air moves in, the temperatures down at the ground level are climbing up to 26 or 27 Celsius there in central and southeastern England. Once again, a little bit lower as you go north and west. But then by Sunday, the area of thundery rain has cleared northeastwards and high pressure is influencing things again in the south. And it's actually quite warm everywhere, even there in northeastern Scotland, up to 22 Celsius, mid 20s in the southern half of the UK. It's into the early part of next week, though, when the fun and games start, because what this chart shows is forecast minimums at 06 GMT on Tuesday, the 22nd of August, so overnight lows. And if you look closely, you'll see in the London area there, 21 Celsius being the lowest value overnight. And that would mean it would, con it would be considered a tropical night, because if temperatures don't dip below 20 Celsius, it qualifies as warm. And the point here, though, is there is a lot of uncertainty, as I say, because at this stage, it's where we've got that very warm air moving in from continental Europe, and a lot of the computer model runs are not showing this happening. But just assuming it does, Tuesday afternoon, forecast maximums, 32 Celsius there in East Anglia. But there is a big temperature gradient across the UK, only 13, 14 Celsius there in northwestern Scotland, 16 or 17 in Northern Ireland. But these have just been used for illustrative purposes, and I wouldn't put too much stock at all in these high values turning up in the southeast because, as I say, a lot of the other computer model runs are showing something significantly different with more changeable conditions and that heat being pushed into continental Europe. The chart here from the UK Met Office, Morgreps G Ensemble, shows forecast rain rates for the London area going forwards through time, so starting on 15th of August through to the 23rd. Each individual line represents the forecast rain from one of the runs in the ensemble model. The reason I've brought it up is because, first of all, this is the initial thundery period. So around the 19th, we've got those outbreaks of rain moving northeastwards across the UK. Quite a 
high degree of confidence that will happen, although the distribution of rainfall remains less certain. But then later on, there are one or two very, very big spikes there. In fact, one or two going right off the top of the chart there, off the scale. And they are in a small minority, but they just point towards that chance that towards the end of the first week, there could really be some torrential downpours in the southeast of England. A low chance, though, because as I say, there were just one or two runs in the ensemble which are suggesting it, but certainly something to keep an eye on. Now, in more general terms, these are the rain aggregate charts for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models. They show values in millimetres. Most of the UK, in fact, all of it is seeing some rain. It's very, very difficult to pin down the distribution. I think probably wettest in the north and the west, but further south and east, because of the thundery nature of the rain, it could well be that totals vary a lot over short distances. Just to illustrate, these charts are from the Met Office UKV model. The one on the left is for 00 GMT, Saturday the 19th. The one on the right, 15 GMT, so Saturday afternoon. The left-hand chart shows that thundery rain pushing upwards from the southwest, moving northeastwards across the UK. The orange and red shading there over much of central eastern England is showing torrential downpours. But keep an eye on the short-range details as the time approaches, because if you're planning a barbecue on Saturday afternoon, it may not be too bad at all, as the chart on the right shows. Just scattered showers in the north and the west, mostly dry in central and eastern England. But as I say, it's really important not to get bogged down in the details at this stage. The 0 to 10 day accumulations, they've increased in all areas. Once more, probably wettest in the north and the west, but the uncertainty really on southern and central regions there. ECM on the left shows some green shading in East Anglia and the southeast, so some big rainfall totals according to ECM. GFS keeps it somewhat drier in those areas. So, rain for everyone, the amounts are uncertain, especially in central and eastern parts of England. In more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we go towards the end of the first week? Do they help to shed any light on the possibility of that hot weather being a factor in the southeast at least? Here is the GFS 00 GMT, Tuesday the 22nd, there the hot air is just flirting, as I say, with southeastern England and East Anglia before it gets pushed away at least for a time into continental Europe. The Canadian model shows the uh, air temperatures over southern Britain to be not as high as the GFS. The German icon also has high pressure there with very warm air pushing into the south. The ECM model, so the European, has the plume of heat a little bit further east in continental Europe, so maybe just pushing into the southeast and east Anglia, but not to the same extent which the GFS does. And finally, the UK Met Office, that has the heat further southeast as well. So taking those together, the point to really bear in mind is there is a lot of uncertainty about whether or not this hot weather will be affecting the southeast and east Anglia towards the end of the first week. More confidence, though, as you head northwards and westwards, that it will be changeable with a risk of showers or longer spells of rain. So with that uncertainty towards the end of week one, how do things develop as we head through the second week? As ever, it's just about the trends and the probabilities of this range using the ensemble data. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. At the start of a period, a lot of the individual runs are above that thick black line, which is a 30-year norm, so quite a lot of support for it to be warmer than average in this part of the UK. But the thick green line is the GFS operational. That's one, one of the ones showing very hot conditions towards the end of the first week at the start of the second. And you can see it's really at the top end of the scale there. There isn't a great deal of support for it from the other runs in the GEFS. So it reduces confidence in it being correct. But the general theme as we go through week two is for most runs to be dipping down towards the 30 year average. The thick purple line there, the ensemble mean, highlights it. Nonetheless, there are a few 
which keep it much warmer or even bring back hot conditions. So, as I say, keep an eye on the details as the time approaches because there is a possibility of it becoming hot at times. The risk of rain continues through the second week, but there are not that many spikes. One or two, though, are quite big, so the chance of thundery conditions not discounted. Two metre temperatures for London using the data table. And I think this shows things a little bit more clearly because the trend is definitely a downwards one to start off with. Most of the runs have fallen into this orange or red, so 21 to 25 or 26 to 30 Celsius. Those are the categories dominating at the start, so it's going to be probably warm, maybe very warm. But as we head forwards, the amount of orange and red decreases, and it's, it's actually the lighter orange which becomes dominant, at least for time, runs going for maximums of between 16 and 20. So a clear downwards trend there in temperatures at the ground level. Up to Manchester, the air temperature anomaly isn't as big as it was on the London plot at the start of a period, and for much of the time, the thick purple line, the mean, stays close to the thick black line, the 30-year average, although there are a few runs on this one as well, which are bringing in much warmer air, even this far north. Rain spikes across the bottom, there are more than there were on the London plot, so it's a wetter picture. Two metre temperatures, so down to the ground. The trend here is not really so well defined as on the London uh, data table, and I think the reason for that is because the London one had the likelihood of warm conditions at the start of a period being pushed away, whereas this has things somewhat cooler throughout the orange suggesting 16 to 20 maximums on most days. Continuing the journey, so up to Glasgow, the air temperature profiles fairly similar to Manchester one. Generally, most of the runs are close to the average, or at least fluctuating around it, they're climbing above it, then dipping below it. In terms of rainfall, it's the wettest of the three plots. In fact, I would describe it as fairly wet generally there through the second week, an ongoing chance of showers or longer spells of rain. So take them all together. The picture is for it to be cooler and wetter as you head northwestwards. These are the two meter temperatures for Glasgow, 16s to 20s dominating, but quite a lot of yellow there, 11s to 15s. So that downward trend in temperatures, which I've just mentioned, is being highlighted here as we head northwestwards across the United Kingdom. The rainfall distribution charts generated using data from the ECM ensemble here are quite interesting. They Each chart is for one day, so days eight, nine, and 10, the first three days of week two, and they are showing the probability of five millimeters or more of rain falling on each of those days. Again, wettest in the west, particularly the northwest, but if you look down to the southeast and East Anglia and Southern Britain in general, there's quite a lot of uncertainty there about how much rain there will be. It's varying over fairly short distances and through the days as well. Going forwards to 11, 12 and 13, so really the second half of week two. The theme is very similar. Wettest in the northwest, a high likelihood of five millimetres or more of rain falling on each of those days. The greens and oranges are suggesting something like a 40 to 60 or 70 percent chance. But eastern and southern counties, on the whole, seeing less rain, but the amounts varying quite significantly, even there. The 10 day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, so for Friday, August the 25th, suggests that high pressure from the Azores will be trying to build northeastwards towards the UK, high pressure over continental Europe, an Atlantic flow more likely in the northern half of the country. So more settled and warmer periods tending to be focused on the south. All in all, probably quite a mixed picture, and as I say, a very, very uncertain one. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, so going forward through week two, shows the amount of yellows and the columns decreasing at least for a while. Those are runs forecasting between 1,011 to 1,025 millibars. Of note is there's 
more green later on, so 996 to 1010 millibars, lower pressure. Also, a little bit of blue starting to show up. Vosa runs going for 991 to uh, 981 to 995 millibars, so deeper areas of low pressure. Possibly just suggesting that transition as we go into September when deeper areas of low pressure start to become more evident and approach for UK. But that's a long way off. The general trend here is for pressure to be dipping a little bit through week two. So low pressure probably just pushing in closer to the UK. Now, before I go on to the summary, I wanted to just bring up something a little bit different. These are the GEFS snow forecast for the Cairngorm Mountains in Scotland. And what I've got here are two tables. The first one is from the 1st to 14th of August this year. The one on the right there is the same period but last year. And each row shows the, uh, a given day through the month and the number of runs in the GEFS ensemble which were forecasting snow in the coming 16 days over the highest part of the Cairngorms. The takeaway here is that by this time last year, there were five runs which were forecasting snow to fall. And this year, despite it being a generally cooler summer, there have only been two so far. Read into that whatever you like. It's really just for interest. I personally wouldn't pay too much heed to it at this stage, but it is quite worthwhile, I think, keeping an eye on these tables to see how they develop in the coming days. They update every six hours on the weather outlook as the GFS data becomes available. So as we head through August and into September, you'd expect to see those values to, uh, to rise quite sharply. Okay, so to summarise, week one, during the first few days, showers become scattered and temperatures rise. It will turn very warm in the south. But through Friday and into Saturday, thundery downpours spread northeastwards across all parts of the UK. Through the rest of the period, there is a risk of showers or long spells of rain in the north, the northwest. But in the south, it should often be drier and warmer. Although even there, there could be showers at times and there is that low risk of thundery downpours. Week two, changeable. Wettest in the north and west, drier in the south and probably the east. Temperatures may well be significantly above the average early on. There is that chance of it being hot, but towards the end of week two, they will be dipping. So, uh, there we have it. It's a mixed picture on the whole. There is the potential for very warm or hot conditions at times in the south, the southeast especially. Also, showers, longer spells of rain and thundery downpours. Something for everyone, perhaps. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And remember that you can stay up to date with all the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.